right, all right. Hello, everybody. Let me turn all that stuff off. I need to... I, for, I forget that I got to turn it off before I switch my camera over because it doesn't automatically go off. You know, it's just the way I got things set up. How's everybody doing? Hello, hello, hello. Got a lot going on tonight. A little bit of stuff we're going to talk about. Mostly tonight, the main topic, 3D printing. And the trials and tribulations and fun and failures and excitement and disgust <laughs> with 3D printing. But first, uh, you all know the grumpy blogger, good old Lloyd Mendenhall. He's, uh, he's waiting in the wings and I'm going to go ahead and bring him in and let's get this show started. Hello, Lloyd. Hello, Mel. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, doing good, doing good. How about you? Hang on a second here. There we go. <coughs> Huh. How you doing, Mel? Doing good. Doing good. And you know, I got two chat windows right. open. And earlier, I couldn't get one to switch to live chat, so I forgot to switch them. So I just now did. You know, and I had to switch both of them because I got two of them going. Right. One for me to watch on the main screen, and then I got the big one up on that other monitor that I do as the overlay on the intro and all that stuff, you right. know. Right, right. So... And, of course, when I change cameras, when I start out, if I don't turn that off, it's still there. <laughs> you know how it is. Yeah, yeah. Too, oh, many, yeah, too yeah. many things to do and too many buttons to push, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did a little changing today because uh, <clears throat> when I'm practicing my ventriloquism, I, whenever I do something on vMix, I, normally when I'm doing a show and I'm not doing that stuff, I hear myself through my headset. That way I can monitor my voice and see how it's sounding and all of that stuff. Right, right. <clears throat> well, when you're trying to practice ventriloquism and you have a three-second delay and your voice comes in after you've already said it, well, then you, you're, you're talking over yourself <laughs> in your head. And that's why I sound, sound so bad most of the time. Because when I'm doing it without the camera, I'm just fine. So, yeah, or or I'll, a lot of times I'll just take my headset off. But when I'm doing a show, I can't do that. So right, I uh, uh, figured out to shut my mic off now, or my 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 feed back to me. In other words, I don't have it feeding back to me anymore. So right, and right, it's right. It's a little disconcerting it for a moment because I'm used to hearing myself. Yeah. But, uh, so you keep you thinking know, something quit working, even though you just it. turned it off. Yeah. It, Exactly, yeah, yeah, gotcha. exactly. So. Gotcha. Well, let me get started here. I'm going to go through the list and say hello to everybody that's in here. Uh, Chris, Sunrise Water Media, Possum, Art, Jody. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Chris, Drone Life RC, uh, Sunrise Water Media. Yep, Chris, that, Chris, Jody, Possum, Trevor. Hello, sir, my brother, Backwoods Droner. Um by the way, just an update, everybody. My dad's out of the hospital and doing better, so that's good, good news. Good, good. Mr. Chris Hope, Robert yeah. Glazer, uh, Third Eye View, Angela, my dear, welcome. Looks like you got a mixed drink going on there with the sunset. Looks like a maybe it's uh, uh, not a tequila sunrise, but a whiskey sunset, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. How's things with you, Lloyd? Third Eye View, hello. How you doing? What have you been up to besides things are pretty good. trying to talk without talking? Uh, well, uh, Judy, we took Judy to the doctor Wednesday because uh, she, uh, she'd been having these headaches for the longest time. And having had a stroke, headaches are kind of a thing I worry about. And... Uh, two weeks ago, they did a pet, a, a cat scan on her, and that was fine. Yes, thank you, Chris. Wow, that's acting weird. And, uh... Thank you, Chris. But, uh, anyway, so I wanted to get, you know, the, the cat scan came back okay, but we still wanted to talk with the doctor. And I hadn't realized it until I was looking it up to give the name... To the doctor of the medicine they put her on for her cholesterol 
that some of the side effects were the exact thing she's experiencing. So uh, we've changed how we're giving it to her, giving it to her, and if it. Uh, I don't want to know how you give it to her if you used to give it to her orally. Well, I used to, at the time we give it to her, I should say. I used to give oh. it to her at bedtime, and now I'm giving it to her earlier in the day because she'd get headaches in, right after she'd take her meds when she'd go to sleep. Ah. So, or that's what it seemed to be, and her joints would start aching and all of this. So, and he basically said, for what it does, you know, with everything she's got going on and her age and everything, it really isn't going to make that big of a difference whether she takes it or not. So. Oh, He's okay. in agreement with me. We're probably going to eliminate it, but we're going to try it for two weeks and see if it still has the same effect. Which, I I think that's we think that's what it is. It was a side effect from this cholesterol medicine they put her on when she had the stroke. Ah, okay, okay, gotcha. Well, so, like I said, just dealing with the heat. Like I was telling, hello JSK. Before before we uh, went live, I was telling you the main topic of tonight's show is going to be 3D printing, and I think I mentioned that just as I came in. 3D printing and all of the victories and woes that go along with it. Um, and tonight, we have a special guest waiting in the wings. He's in the chat. He's been saying yes. hello. Hello, Sean. Um, many of you know him. Some of you may not. If you don't, you should link to his channel is That's in right. the description here and we're just going to bring in Sean from Sean Eyed Studios. Hey What's brother. Up, How you doing? How you doing? Hey Sean. Good. Lloyd Mill. Yeah, uh it's when Sean went uh telling everybody out there, you know, you and I were just on art show last week together, so it's like yeah, we're going to have to quit meeting like this, Sean. People are going to start to talk. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to start buying me dinner. Whoa. <laughs> the meetings will okay, stop. I into that one. <laughs> the meetings yeah. will stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hello, Grant. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Broke up anyway. right there. Anyway, so uh, have you been doing much 3D printing lately, Sean? Um, I would say the last thing that I 3D printed was a mount for my Inspire to, uh, to hang, um, a 360 camera and a GoPro to my, to my drone. Okay. Um, that was probably the last thing that I did. Okay. Um, but yeah, just, I, all the stuff that I do is like little camera gear. Do you, do you no, do any, do you do any yeah. night flying with that at all? Um. I do not. Or Twilight, Civil Twilight. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll fly at the Golden Hour some. I've got a um, model that I can send you. Actually, I've got two models that I can send you, and you can print them. One is a Snap-on battery cover for the Inspire One batteries. It snaps okay. on and slides up over the contacts to protect them. Okay. And the other is a snap-on light mount that you snap a pen light into and okay. you you put it on each arm right behind the front motors and put pen lights in it and it gives you a pair of nice headlights oh nice yeah that's cool i made all of that stuff when yeah, and uh, everybody likes a pair of nice headlights <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> hello mike b <laughs> yeah Angela, they're talking about you. <laughs> uh, All right. I had, uh, I still have them. In fact, I got both of them laying around somewhere. The same pen light that my local volunteer fire department uses. And they're extremely bright. So I made adapters that they could be snapped into and then snap onto that motor arm on the Inspire. And they don't. They don't droop and slip around or nothing. They, they, they snap on good and solid, and they hold real well. They hold tight. They're actually kind of hard to put them on because you think you're going to break them. But I made them that way so that they, so that they would hold tight. But uh, what do you use for your CAD software? Do you use Fusion? 
Um, yeah, I've created in 360 Fusion. Um, I've uh, done something with Nacho. It was kind of a kind of a freebie cloud type type song. I think it was like Tinker something. Tinkercad. Tinkercad. I played around with that a little bit. Just uh-huh. when COVID hit, he was making um, masks that. Like he could put a fan on his chest and it'll blow cold air into his face mask. Uh huh. Um, so I was playing. It was his first time 3D printing, so I was I was kind of helping him out with, you know, ways to design the print so that you didn't have so many supports and so much cleanup afterwards and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and sometimes just changing the changing the orientation on the print bed will eliminate a lot of supports and things. Yeah. You know what I don't like is I don't like when I print on a raft. It seems like printing on a raft is the most reliable way to be able to get the prints off the print bed because <laughs> if you use a like I've got a metal spatula, it's a it's got a real sharp edge on it and but it's pretty thick. And when I put that sharp edge against the print bed like it's shaped like a chisel I guess and it always seems to damage the corner of the print just a little bit right where I start getting it up underneath the print to get it off the bed so I print on a raft that way I can peel the raft off it'll slide up under the raft pretty easy but then I've got the mess of the raft to deal with and Jody says print on tape well right now my my uh, GTEC printer, the dual extruder, has a glass bed with a with a print surface on it. One of those like things yeah. you stick on, right? Like a vinyl sticker. Yeah. Yeah, like kind of. Vinyl sticker. Yeah, whatever. It, I don't know if it's vinyl or what it is, but um, anyway, it has that. And. I was having some trouble getting stuff to stick to that, even with hairspray, which is what I normally use on it. So I decided to go back to the good old clean glass and and glue, glue stick. So I just flipped that thing over because the opposite side of it's, you know, clean glass. And spread glue stick on it, and now I'm back in business. But uh, the, the, it just, it just irritates me that when you peel the raft off, you don't have as nice a finish as if you had printed directly on the print bed, you know? Yeah. And if you print upside down to get the nice finish on that side, then maybe you'll have a whole bunch more support or you'll have a bunch of other cleanup you have to do because now the model is orientated in a different orientation. Yep. Yeah, I don't have a removable build plate, Trevor. Um, a flex plate. Sometimes I wish I did. Um, That's what I've got. I don't have that. Uh, no, Jody, I use uh, Simplify 3D. I have Cura, but I'm kind of partial to Simplify 3D for the slicer. But... Uh, I've been studying videos and trying to learn Fusion 360 because when I started 3D printing five or six years ago, everybody said, use Tinkercad, man. It's easy to learn. It's free. It's, you know, it works good. It's like, okay. So I started learning to make my models in Tinkercad. I can whip something out in Tinkercad fairly quickly. Yeah. Fusion 360 is just making my brain hurt. <laughs> yeah, I think with with uh, Fusion 360, I think the benefit is you can get really, really precise. Whereas, like like with Tinkercad, you use you know like you start out with simple shapes, but you, I mean you can get advanced with Tinkercad. But Fusion 360 is, I mean, it's AutoCAD. I mean, it's it's legit. Yeah, yeah, well, so is Tinkercad. I mean, it's 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 as legit as any other CAD program. It's just it doesn't have a lot of power. It doesn't have a lot of features like something like Fusion 360 does, you know, with in Autodesk. 
Um, but then Autodesk, the company that creates and updates and maintains Fusion 360, Fusion 360 is not the only program that they run and support. And they're a company. I mean, they, they've they got big corporations using their software, and, it, you know, it, it's expensive to use. Uh, yep. The, the guy that I've been watching his tutorials and watching, studying how he does things actually works for Fusion 360. He's one of the developers, and he makes tutorial videos on the side and he's got I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of subscribers and he doesn't even monetize his channel because he doesn't want to create a conflict of interest between his personal monetization and his job you know but uh, um, he, he, he explains things really really well he's the the, the best that I've found in YouTube as far as a guy that does tutorials and explains how to, how to do things and how to use them. And because last October, I think it was fusion made a bunch of changes in their user agreement and their way of doing things. And now my license, even though I bought, I bought the software, I paid for it. It's, uh, um, a, a, a restricted license. Now it's, it's a personal use license only which I thought was kind of interesting. So I can only have 10 active models at a time. If I want to have another one, I'll have to, once I fill my list of 10, then I'll have to um, archive one, and that'll free me up a spot, you know, to put one in. But, yeah. I know, right? Lloyd seems to be doing that. But... I have some images of this thing I've been working on and I've been I've been working on a RC rock crawler trailer that I actually got the the main file from Thingiverse and um this friend of mine that's into rock crawlers and stuff and got all kinds of that stuff going on showed me a picture of it down at the hobby store one day and asked me if it was something I could 3d print and what I would charge him to print it and I said yeah man I he showed me a picture and I thought okay I didn't nothing to that you know 20 bucks whatever <coughs> well uh, you've heard the the phrase stick your foot in your mouth let me go over here real quick and make sure this stays on and make sure that stays on. There's an image of this trailer, basically. Now, some of it I've got cleared out transparent so you can see the rest of it, but it's got a frame and a tongue and a couple of boxes and some leaf springs and spring shackles and spring hangers and an axle bar and then the axles, you know, bolt to that and then the wheels and wheel bearings and all that kind of stuff attached to that and the interesting thing is is it's uh it's 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 pretty big it's actually about a foot long in in physical scale and uh it's got a spot for the back bumper there you can see where the back bumper would attach to it and it's got tail lights and so this one's going to have tail lights and floodlights and all that kind of stuff mounted to it. So not only did I have to figure out how to size it for his truck and, and the modifications that he wanted done to it, but um, now I have to figure out how to do all the wiring and make it plug into his truck when it when the time comes. So, I've got the core of this thing now printed, and this is what it looks like. How it's, cool. It's, uh, awesome. That's just the two boxes, of course, and 
believe it or not, those chains and hooks, those safety chains, are actually safety chains that will hook to the hitch that goes in the, the receiver hitch in his truck. Um, I had to 3D print those too. And it's got a, I made a ball and socket thing that from another part of an RC car to make it, uh, make it work like a, like a, uh, trailer hitch would work. But the two, both boxes are, are empty. They, so you can put stuff in them and put storage in them. And this one's actually going to have a roof rack that goes on it that will have floodlights and spotlights and light bars and room to store stuff and all kinds of things. That's awesome. So that's, that's what I've been working on. So I printed the frame, the hangers, the leaf springs, the axle bar, and the axle hubs that the wheel bearings go in that the axle goes out through and the tongue printed all those because that's all that would fit on my bed my print bed is 250 by 250 millimeters so it's pretty good size so i put all that stuff on one print and it was 27 hours just for the frame that big box i printed it and the lid by itself because it's 120 millimeters wide and 141 millimeters long and 80 or 90 millimeters tall and that left me about 100 millimeters of space on the back of the bed I could have used but I was mixing the colors I was blending the colors so that I'd get something other than black because he wanted the boxes to be gray so I did two different blend levels of white and black. The big box, I printed that with a, a, about a 60% black and 40% white mix. And then the little box, I printed that with like a 80% white and 20% black mix to get two different colors of gray in it. Because of the dual extruder, I can run two filaments at the same time and mix them together. And I can control the mix in the on the printer. I can set it to print it 50-50 or 60-40 or whatever I think it, I want it to be to start with. And then once it starts printing the raft, if it's not the right color, right there on the screen on the printer, I can change the mixture to modify the color, the amount that I want it to mix. So... so so if you've got if you've got a black extruder and a white extruder going through the same um, same nozzle, how did how does it mix it instead of striping it? Like how did it not come out like well? You know, like if you watch like a candy maker uh, and they've got on like a, it actually does on a microscopic level. It looks like a tube of toothpaste coming out. Two okay. different okay, two different colors, but. Yeah. Because we're not looking at it under a microscope, it, it's, it's an illusion of a mixed color. And the chamber in the hot end is big enough that once the two colors get fed in, one oh, color's moving faster than the other, so it's going to start a natural swirl, right, inside there, I believe. And <laughs> once it builds up enough pressure to start pushing it out the, the nozzle you end up with hello joe you end up with a blended mix of two different colors so here's just an example this was printed with white and blue but the majority of it it didn't start out pure white obviously mm -hmm. and which it should have and then the mix should have been somewhere closer to the middle instead of at the bottom. But this model was part of the, it was on the SD card when I got the printer. So it's just however they had it set up, it was a test print to, to do the test. But um, when I mix the colors, that's another thing I do like about using a wrapped is when I mix the colors, I can... I can 
determine the color I want a little better and adjust the mixture while it's running. Thanks, Joe. Um, yeah, Jody's saying you can, it's sort of, when you, depending on how much of a retract you have in there, you know, where it pulls it back in and keeps it, keeps it heated so that as it's extracting, you know, it, it blends it in inside the uh, print nozzle. Ooh. Yeah, but the retraction thinks what he said. Yeah, is, is in the end equal. Of the print. the e is at the end of the print. Oh, it's no, equal. Yeah, the track the retraction. Um, I keep it the same on both. And th the purpose for retraction is to pull the filament back from the hot end a little bit, so it's not extruding. That way, when the nozzle moves to another spot, you don't get all the stringy moves. stuff. Yeah, that's right. the purpose for ex for it's retraction. Okay, all right. Um, the mixing of the color is strictly how much per one of one you put in versus the other. Something else that's going through my mind is if you've got black on this side and white on this side, mm -hmm. and your extruder's going this way. It seems like black would be on the bottom, and then it starts going this way, and it seems well, like white would be on the bottom. And you know, it's kind of funny because let me let me move this over here real quick to this image again. Make sure everything is turned on. Let me go. Where is that particular image at? Which one is it? That one. I'm gonna take this one and go to position, and I'm gonna zoom in on this. Yeah, this will this will work. I'm going to zoom way in on this and move it over here and move it up. If you look, you'll see different color bands yeah. as, as, it, as it travels. And, and it's really weird because it's only, like you said, it, it's, it's not as apparent. Like in this front, the nozzle was moving front to back. So y-axis the table was moving front and back but yet on the short side um you can still see a little bit of a, a darker gray streak on the right hand side that's in line with that dark streak on the front yeah. but but it's that's where the nozzle was moving sideways the x-axis mm -hmm. was moving sideways back and forth the other one was the y-axis because I had it printing a long ways on the on the bed. Um, so yeah, it does. It does fool with it a little bit, and that's the problem with. Uh, that's the problem with mixing, sometimes mixing colors together. Flex seal yeah. and paint it, Jody says. You can always use flex seal and paint. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, when in doubt. Um, but you know, this is a, a free job. I'm I'm not charging for this because it's not my model. You know, it may as well be with all the mods I've done to it and all the changes I've made that, um, let me go back to that image because this, um, let me reset all this, um, the the big box is supposed to be the same width as the narrow one. It's supposed to be only the width of the frame. Okay? Uh, the tongue in the model has no attachment method to attach it to the trailer hitch on the vehicle. So you have to come up with that yourself. Um, I think I made the main box 90 millimeters tall and I think in the model it's only 80. I can't remember if I made it taller or not. I think I did. Um, and because I moved the box, you can see in the back corner there on the bottom of in the main box, that block, that's what I had to add for screw material to, for a screw to go up through the bottom of the frame and into the bottom of the box to hold it to the frame. Because that's how it's held on is it's screwed on from the bottom. And then, of course, when I made it wider, the axle bar that the axles mount to, I had to make it wider to accommodate the wider box. I had to push the wheels out, otherwise they'd rub, right? Yeah. So I had to do that just the right amount because the fenders have a flat plate 
and then they come up over the wheel like so but that flat plate screws to those two holes in the side of the side of the main box there and that's what holds the fenders on so all the stuff that i've modified and changed and resized it may as well be my model but i'm in the yeah. process of um building one now well i'm 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 uh, not building it yet actually i'm drawing it out but i am going to be building a tandem axle dual wheel drop frame trailer that's going to look like that when it's done oh cool and it's almost 900 millimeters long <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, the frame is 15 millimeters tall with a 10 millimeter cut on the inside of it so it makes it like a C channel mm -hmm. and it's 10 millimeters wide or 12 millimeters wide so the outer wall is two millimeters thick. That leaves me a 10 by 10 channel on the inside. And that's going to be lined with 10 by 10 aluminum bar stock to run the length to give it strength over that length of a trailer. And this trailer will actually be strong enough to carry a rock crawler truck or a drag car. The drag cars aren't as heavy. They... They only weigh a couple of pounds, but some of these rock crawlers, when they get them all loaded up with all the accessories and everything, are 8, 10, 12-pound vehicles. So wow. I had to design the frame in a way that it would support the weight of carrying something like that. But yeah. uh, kind of kind of interesting. I, I like designing stuff and building stuff and... and they make a trailer kit that you can buy, like on Amazon or whatever, but it's a solid trailer axle all the way across, and the wheels bolt right to that. So the wheels don't turn individually of each other. So when you pull the trailer around a corner, you've got wheels that are skidding and locking up, and you know, because yeah. when wheels go around a corner, the outer wheel rolls faster than the inner wheel because it's covering more territory. So they turn at different speeds. I mean, that's, yes. that's why rear end differentials have spider gears in them. That's why it, it, they just can't turn at the same speed. They, they have to roll at different speeds. And I just thought that was crazy. Um, yeah. That's why yeah. the wheels on the bus go round and round. That's, that's exactly true. That's, that's um, basic. 850 millimeters to inches. 33.46 so it's about 34 inches long joe just because you were asking <laughs> uh, wow it's almost yeah. three feet i'm yeah I, yeah yeah it's huge i'm actually considering firing up my printer again because i've got a project in mind i just gotta get the time and decide if i have guts enough to try it but i'm actually going to try printing a a ventriloquist dummy like the the ones with the movable mouths and the uh, you know the stick control type uh there's a couple patterns out there for it but i don't know how long it's going to take hey but tighter that's probably what my next that's probably what my next project's going to be is uh you know like a, a danny o'day or charlie mccarthy type ed something like that that's cool. What they call a dummy rather than a puppet, which is what I use now. <clears throat> That's cool. I'm going to keep quiet. I'm going to go to the uh, halftime. <laughs> halftime. Uh, <laughs> Got to have something to do. <laughs> going to go to the halftime shameless plug zone. If you want to send a video to the show, to a link to the video rather, not the whole video. Don't send a video. Just send a link to it. Host it on your channel. In the email, tell me it's a link to a video and tell me what the music source is. Because rumor has it, if it ain't epidemic, it's crap. Uh, <laughs> that's what they say anyway. 400AGL uploads at gmail.com. And then if you think 
DJI, you need to send something to the channel. Physical P.O. Box address, Box 12. Yes, that's right, Box 12. Don't pick on me, Lloyd. Holiday, Tennessee, 38341. That's the place to do that. And then, of course, we have this other thing. Uh, where is it, Lloyd? What did I do with it? It's that thing, you know, uh, I can't find it. I don't know what I did with it. I always lose stuff. I lose too many things. If they weren't screwed down, I'd lose my marbles. Um, I don't know where it's at. Anyway, I'll just shout it out. 400AGL.net is the website. On the website is a button for Remote Pilot 101. Go there, get your discount. Thanks to moi. $99 lifetime membership for Remote Pilot 101 if you want to go get your 107. And another tip about the 107 thing. The FAA recently released, recently released the recurrent test on FAA Drone Zone. It's free to take the test. The only real benefit is that it allows you as a 107 pilot to fly at night beyond civil twilight at night without a waiver, without any daytime right. waiver or special permission, as long as you're in legal airspace and your drone has the appropriate lighting attached, visible for three yes. miles, blah, 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 three blah, mile. blah. Um, if you do all that, three mile visibility. you get a little certificate that you can print out and carry with you if you choose. I got it digital on my phone just in case anybody asks for it. But... It lets you fly at night, and the only reason I took the recurrent from the FAA website on July 4th was so that that night I could fly and shoot photos of the fireworks and put it on my YouTube channel, which I have done video on my channel. Go find it. Have fun. Um, the other thing is, if you had your 107, but it has expired, you went beyond your two years and you didn't renew, Guess what? If you go to the FAA website and take their recurrent test online, it makes you current again. You don't have to do nothing, and it's free. You can just go there, take the test, and boom, you're automatically recertified and current for two more years. The other good thing about the FAA's website test, recurrent test, is couple of things one you want to make sure you take the non part 61 recurrent test that's because that means 61 is manned aircraft blah blah non part 61 is the one you want and it's a you mean piloted aircraft what did i say you said, you said manned, manned aircraft yeah manned aircraft no it's piloted air it's crewed aircraft now Oh, well, by God, this channel ain't Art's Place and ain't politically correct here. By God, it's freaking manned aircraft. <laughs> Wait, I thought I was going to get, get a rise out of it. Otherwise, it would be, yeah. um, it's, you can't even say parental. You can't, what is it? No dad, no mom, no grand, no, none of that bullshit. And that's just what it is, bullshit, yeah. U.S. government. I yeah. say well, whatever the hell FAA I want. FAA has switched switched to calling it the in, on the FAA. It is changing to a crewed aircraft or uncrewed aircraft. Uncrewed well, would be drones. Well, that's Nazi Pelosi's fault, you know. So I don't care what they do. I don't care what she does. Oil? What's that? Does that huh? mean it, like it's it's fueled by gas? What if what about an electric aircraft? Yeah. Why is, why is it doesn't it matter. If there's not a human being in it, it's uncrewed. So. Uncrewed? Oh, C-R-E-W. Well, the last thing anybody can say about me is I'm uncrewed, by God. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're crude. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're definitely crude. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, the beauty yeah. about the FAA recurrent exam on their website is not only that it's free, Angela but it's an, it's an automatic pass. You cannot fail any question. Because if you get one wrong, they make you do it over till you get it right. 
So it's a 100% pass rate. Period. The end. Simple. Took me 15, 20 minutes to read through the stuff they wanted you to read and then take the exam. Not a big deal. And it was and easy. There is it was proof a piece of that cake. even a trained monkey can pass this test. That's exactly true. Yep. Lloyd took it, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, what's that printer you have again, Sean? I don't remember what it is. We kind of got off topic talking about all that other stuff. Um, it is. <laughs> It's by FlashForge, um, and it's Flash the Adventure Forge. 3. That's, that's it. I couldn't remember the, the manufacturer of it. Um, yeah, it's, it's the Adventure 3. It's got a heated bed. Um, it's got a flexible heated bed, so I can take it off and just pop things off of it. Show off. Um, yeah, that's very nice. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I um, wish I got, that mine had that. Yeah, I got the lighter version. There's a There's a more expensive version that has a webcam in it and you can monitor your print from somewhere else but i don't ever print from somewhere else because i don't i don't want my house to burn down so for your house isn't um, gonna burn down pretty easy to set up <laughs> your own webcam if you want one though yeah why spend extra money right yeah. yeah yeah uh new person in the chat that i don't recall seeing s-o-i-l i'm guessing southern illinois aerial welcome whoever you are Welcome to the show. Hope you enjoy. And if you like the content, consider subscribing. And I do have a membership. You can support the channel that way, too. All these crazy things I build and make. Uh, Shameless plug. Number five? How many am I allowed? Five, I think. It's your show. You can have as many as you want. That's the answer I, I wanted to hear. I got mine all consolidated. <laughs> See, you, I, I, I've I've got mine all consolidated into a little thing. I just push a button and I. You made yeah, a fancy thing for yours, yeah. You highfalutin. No, I just got lazy. I, uptown yeah, technical I didn't guys. Keep repeating, so I just push a button. You know. Hey, and Dustin. I there there you go. Ticker that's on the on the pay, on the screen the whole time. Just says, it, go to my website, send videos here. Just, I could do all that nonsense. It's, you know, I I just don't need to. I don't know just a waste of time to me it's yep. just to me it's distracting when i see videos and live streams it's got all that stuff going across the bottom i think i'm watching cnn or something you know it's like <laughs> yeah no i'm just well, picking at you i think it depends on you know <laughs> what you want to do with your channel you know and how you want to uh yeah do it I just sorry i got to plug in the phone over here otherwise i can't monitor judy well, get it plugged in then, because you need to have that. Uh, uh yeah, yeah. By the way, anybody, uh, make sure. Just, just in case anybody's paying attention in the chat that cares, um, I do have three D printer for hire. By the way, just, just in case anybody wants uh, I'll something I'll made. Let you print the, I'll let you print the dummy head then. Uh, the same deal with trailer I, can, I got. I can do. Um, you want it to have kind of a smile and raised eyebrows? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, let me. I can better start on a fresh piece of paper, and I'll get this printed out for you right away, Lloyd. I'm gonna draw it up right now. Yeah, uh, so we I'm got sure the eyeballs will. and the raised I, I can eyebrows. I tell how excited you would be. And to, the, the yeah. smile, and then we've got to put a ball yeah. cap on it too, right? And it's good. Uh, ball oh, no. cap. No, I just want the blank head. The rest of it'll be covered in fiberglass. Oh, no! See, you got to have, got to have raised eyebrows and a smile and hat that says "Grumpy Blogger" on it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. How'd you draw him that fast? That was a spitting image. <laughs> <laughs> I was so tracing. So talented <laughs> That's talent right there. Yeah, he just held it up. Uh, he just, yeah, you know, he has a monitor down there, and he just put the paper over it and drew over my face on the monitor on sitting on his desk. Yeah. Absolutely. <sighs> anyway, um, I created this so, greasy bust. Now, oh, what go. do you use that for? 
That's where my VR headset goes on. Oh. It's a, VR headset. It's a little mannequin. Oh. Did you print that? Yeah. No, I didn't. I bought it on Amazon. I, why, I, why didn't you print I have it? drawn it up, though. Why, why didn't but you it print it? Because it, I bought it on Amazon. <laughs> oh. I can print it. Yeah. Um... Dustin, I think it is, yeah. so Southern Illinois Aerial. Um, I have all kinds of programs that can do that. I can take a picture of you, Lloyd or Sean or anybody, and not only 3D print it, but I can laser engrave it on wood or something like that also. It's pretty easy. Nice. I've actually got, with the, with the iPhone 12s, with the fa anything that has facial recognition on it, it has, it has, the way that works is it sends out laser, okay, little, and the only way you can see it is if you shut off all your cameras and use night vision, and then turn on your facial recognition, you'll see all the light beams coming off your camera, and those are small, yeah. minute laser pinpoints, and that app that he, that he's talking about, I actually have it on my phone, you can sit there and hold it in front of yourself, and just, Turn on your camera and do this, and you get a full three-dimensional 3D image that can be changed into a uh, what is it, STL. Yeah, or a file. Yeah, use that and then slice it to a G code. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Was exactly. That, is that yeah, lidar? It, 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 it's similar. Well, lidar but, is in the new iPhone tw iPhone 12s, but I think I'm, now I've with the lidar, lidar it's much more detailed. Right. Well, then you can do it with yours easily. Yeah. But I have an iPhone XR, and I can do it with mine. And it's just the facial recognition because that's how it recognizes your faces with, uh, you know, it's, it's it's such a mild laser beam, and the light spectrum is on the far end of the, you know, it's over on the infrared side. It's the only reason you can see it is in an infrared camera. <clears throat> and you can do that uh because I actually tried it, and it, it gives me a, a 3D image of my face. and Not that I'm going to make a dummy that looks like me, because I figure one dummy <laughs> like me is enough. <laughs> uh, I want to, because I skipped that segment at halftime, I, uh, I didn't do it completely. Xbox 360 Kinetic. I have a video to share, and Kinetic I think I'm going to close... Actually, I just now see that Joe Blaylock sent one in. Joe, it'll, it'll have to make it next week because I don't have it set up to play it. But I do have one set up to play from from uh, uh, Fly Zone Drone. Boy, that totally went away there for a minute. Um, so You're this kidding. really is some amazing video. And it was shot with the Air 2S and, I believe, an iPhone. The editing is awesome. Everything is its just a super cool video. Uh, it's about six minutes long. So I'm going to play the whole video, which I normally don't play. I usually just play a couple of minutes, right? So we get a look at it and comment on it. But I'm going to play the whole video, let you guys talk about it, and after that I'll just roll into the timer. So... Sean, anything else you want to say to everybody before we cut out? Because we're about to cut out. Oh, I just—I really appreciate you having me on your channel, and uh, yeah. Well, I wish you—I wish you did a lot more in Fusion 360. I was hoping you'd say you were a Fusion 360 Ace, because I need a tutor. But anyway. <laughs> I mean, I've made like a, it, I don't know if you've seen the tutorial on YouTube where a guy makes a, he turns his logo into a little coin. Um, oh. Where you, you, you take like the EPS of your logo and then extrude it and then you do like the 360 degree, like you can draw like a circle and then pivot it around the <clears> 60s and put little notches and stuff. I can do that stuff. Okay. Well, I can do that in Tinkercad in, in <laughs> moments, in seconds. Okay. Yeah. But what I'm going to do here real quick is I'm going to capture this image uh, of this thing. 
uh, let me delete that and delete that and delete that okay uh, I'm gonna do this as quick as I can y'all this right here kind of was unplanned but that's okay um, it's not a train wreck I actually do have it under control right supposedly everything that we want at our fingertips is available true um, this is called a roof rack and this is the roof rack that I designed for the top of that trailer that I'm building for the guy right mm -hmm. um, oh I already had a picture of it in there darn I didn't have to go make another one but right here now the the green bottom plate that's the actual roof of the I, I had it sitting on there to make it all fit but that right there took me all of 20 minutes in Tinkercad to put together okay and I guarantee it would take longer in Fusion 360 than 20 minutes to make that. It would take me days in Fusion 360 because I don't <laughs> know how to use Fusion 360. But yeah. uh, that's the uh, yeah. that's the that's going to be the roof rack. The four that's mounts cool. on the each sides. That's for the sideways floodlights, and then if in the front edge of it there it's actually the rear you see a couple notches in the top rail that's where brackets are going to go in to mount the LED light bar across the back of it and all the little holes that you see around the top rail those are for the bungee hooks for the miniature 110 scale cargo net that's going to be over the top of it with all of the other things up inside of there that it need to be held down with a cargo net so anyway, yeah, that's that's what that's all about. But let me. Get I would say that 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 took you twenty minutes. That would not take me twenty minutes in Tinkercad, just because I'm not familiar with it as much. I see a lot of the repetition and like, you know, you make one bracket and then duplicate it three times and put it, it in, you know. Yeah. Like once you get that process down, but. Um, the same well, see, tools are in Fusion 360. Well, like the arch, the arcs that come down from the top. Uh huh. I, I, I and I, I did. I spent four hours doing this this afternoon. I want to try to duplicate that top rail, which is nothing than more than a set of tubes this way and a set of tubes this way, with an elbow connecting each of the four tubes together to make it one solid piece. Right. Yeah. I could make the tubes going each way or I uh -huh. could make an elbow and I could extrude the end of the elbow out and make it into a tube but then yeah. when I tried to make the next elbow going up the other way instead of just arcing up just a little ways 90 degrees like the first one it went all the way back to the beginning like a big arc all the way you know I, <laughs> I give up piece of shit yep. you know anyway it it broke my heart made me cry it was terrible uh Let's get back to the video. You guys want to see this video? Yep. Here we go. Feel free to talk about this. What do you think about it, Sean? I well, know you like is, to do cinematic stuff. I do. Is all of it done with the Air 2S, or, or was the Air 2S used in some of the footage? Some of the some footage, of the I think, is an iPhone. Really? It's an iPhone. Okay. Yeah, I think it looks really, really good. Um, I like the manual focus there. Ooh, hummingbird. Nice. 
Now, is there music with this? I think it was a bumblebee. Yeah, there's music playing. Do you not hear it? No. It's light. I hear it a little bit. Yeah, it's not overpowering. It's a little better. I can barely hear it, though. Just think Game of Thrones. Trailer. Epic. There it is. I like that shot. There it is, yeah. That kind of looks like my backyard, with the water tower over in the distance. Uh-huh. I like how he added the airplane sound to it. <laughs> cool. Yep. Yeah, the wind flying through. Yeah. This is nice. See if you look, see if you can cross the road. Do you look both ways? Tell you what, that Air QS has an amazing range. Like to get to get that shot. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just wonderful how far that thing can fly. Wow. Now, whose video is this? Because again. Yeah, and it looks like he's got a manual exposure going on because it doesn't. You know, sometimes when you look at the sky and the sky's bright and then you point down at the ground and all of a sudden the, your whole exposure changes. Fly zone drone. <laughs> Quadcopters, Lloyd. Fly zone drone. Okay, fly zone drone. Whoa. That's it. She got real. There we go. Some action now. <laughs> no goose was safe. In a world. <laughs> I love going forward and pointing it down slowly. That's one of my favorite things. And then a little speed ramping. Yeah, that's cool. That's an interesting parking lot. It has like a little football in the middle of it. It looks like a football, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Took a cul-de-sac and put it put like interior parking into it. Right. I like I a lot of the transitions. Cloud. Yeah. 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 Transitions are good. Very nicely done overall. I was pretty impressed. Hello, Brad. Yeah, Welcome. Great. I like it when you can see the flyer in the video too. Yeah. Like I know, like professional, you kind of want to stay out of it, but I do. Ooh, and I, there's another drone over there flying away. Yep. That's nice. So it looks like a meetup. A couple friends plant, flying the drones together. That's a beautiful yeah. shot. That's incredible that is, right there. Yeah, that's a gorgeous. That's brilliant. Sunset. That's why I said I'm gonna let this whole video play. Yeah. Yeah. Very this good. Is definitely. Uh, I'm gonna go subscribe to this guy. Where is he in the chat? Um, I don't think I've seen him in chat, and I don't have a link to his channel in the description yet. I got to put it in there. Let me see if yeah, I can do that video, real quick. This video alone deserves a subscribe. It's pretty. That's a cool shot. I like that. I love Fly Zone drones, right? Yeah. Fly Zone. Okay. Okay. I'll put the link in the chat. Thought I was subscribed to him. Yeah, he sounds familiar to me too. Yeah, I mean, uh. Yeah. Oh, and then it ends with the cinematic climbing up the tree. I like it. Okay, 
link to his channel is now in the description to this live stream. Okay. Yeah, it kind of ends the same way it started, oh. you know? Yeah. Yeah. A little book bookmarking. Yeah, I've seen some of his videos before. I recognize his face. But I'm not subscribed. Yeah, but I am now. Yeah. Well, I was subscribed, but for some reason, I'm not now. Or I was, but I'm not at the moment. But I am now, again. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, I've seen him nice on stuff. a lot of. Uh, there you have it. Uh, I, Very nice. Very nice right, job. Yeah, very nice. Excellent. Very so, nice. Well done, man. Well done. What do you got coming up in the future, Chris? Anything you want to talk about, or Sean, you want to talk about right now, real quick, or no? Um. Yeah. Every Tuesday night, um, 7 p.m. Central, I do my live stream on uh, my channel is Sean Eyed Studios. There's a link to your channel yeah. in the description here as well. Very cool. So yeah, um, not much going on um, right now. I'm in the middle of like switching my studio around, but um, yeah, plan on doing some some Google Street View professional 360 videos and um, that kind of stuff. Cool. And since since hanging out in this live stream, I think I'm going to design a teardrop camper, RC size, <laughs> and and build that. I wanted to build a real one, but I may never build a real one, so I'll just 3D print one. There you go. Um, 110 scale is, the, is the scale to do. 110. Got one, it. Yeah. 110 scale. That gives you a nice size without being too big. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lloyd, Most your RC stuff is done in 110 scale. Planning well, on, planning on show your show tomorrow night? night? Yeah. Yep, tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central Time, the Grumpy Vlogger. And uh, uh, it's going to be the same old stuff, you know, have a panel of people on. Uh, and, uh, you know, same thing, different day. There you go. The Monday Roundup <laughs> by the Grumpy Hello, Jerry. Vlogger. Welcome. You missed the show, buddy. Have to go back and watch the replay. <laughs> uh all right, guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for coming on, Sean. And yeah, thanks for having me. We'll talk to you more. Probably see you next week on your show. Uh, I'll be in, be in and out of chat. I've, I've been hitting and missing them. Uh, I've been working a lot. I got a lot of hours into this trailer thing I'm building. And what do I do? Yeah. I start start another build on another trailer. You know. Plus, I'm working on pranking truck. Got right. the drive, got the drive line going in on yeah. that, so that'll be driving hopefully this next week. We'll see. Anyway, thanks, guys. Always good seeing you, Sean. Yeah, you too. See you later. All right, everybody. You could have been anywhere you chose to be here, and I really, really do appreciate that. Thank you. Have a good evening.